what are some of the other industries that you think are going to be affected and what policies get triggered as a result of that? Well, one of the things, of course, is, that's very big is any form of hospitality industry. Um, hotel chains, resorts, cruise lines, things of that nature. Um, one impact, of course, is the uh, closure of uh, hotels, resorts, things of that nature. And to what degree some of them may have coverage. But uh, one example that uh, could possibly come up, what if there's a major international hotel chain that does have coverage for shutdown due to virus? Well, as an underwriter, I would have never anticipated that an entire worldwide chain could be shut down. I would accept my risk based on maybe one or two or a few properties being impacted by a virus, but with the worldwide shutdown chain, will the insurer have the financial wherewithal to respond to lo losses of this magnitude? What is this gonna do to business interruption? What is this gonna do to whether or not somebody has coverage or not? Do you have any thoughts on that? That is uh, probably one of the biggest immediate questions that we have because there have already been so many suits filed. Uh, I mean, a, a check of the internet a few days ago uh, had a long, long, long list of uh, businesses, named mainly restaurants that have been shut down. And uh, with the virus exclusion uh, in play, we don't know where that will go. Will the insurance regulators get involved and and uh, make decrees that the virus exclusion does or does not or should or should not apply? Uh, what will the courts say? We don't know about that. And will the courts be uh, uh, monolithic or will it be different from one state to the next? Uh, th this is probably one of the biggest immediate unknowns. Can we touch on some of these issues, some of these sub-issues? You, you've mentioned the, the, the virus exclusion. There's an issue involving property damage, whether there's actually been property damage. There's ingress, egress, those kinds of additional subjects. Can you touch a little bit on those and how you see those playing out? Exactly. Uh, for one thing, uh, we're talking about property damage. You mentioned that. Supposing a hotel owner, operator, discovers that the virus is present in some of its rooms. Now, will that uh, be construed as damage to property from the existence of the virus that causes the shutdown? I think that's one big question that uh, we may be facing. Uh, another would be ingress and egress. If there are businesses in office buildings that have been shut down that uh, can't uh, operate, uh, will that be a covered claim? Uh, what about the contingent business interruption from a supplier that's been shut down? Again, that would depend upon whether or not there is coverage for the virus at some point. These are just a few of the things that we're starting to look at at this point. Can you give me a little bit more of an example of what you mean by contingent business interruption for those people who are not familiar with it? Contingent business interruption... Uh, is a loss to business interruption from the shutdown uh, of a supplier or a customer, for example. The case I worked on recently, um, a uh, power plant shut down and a coal mine that was basically across the road that supplied coal to this power plant had to shut down too. So the coal mines contingent business interruption coverage applied due to the shutdown of their customer, the power plant across the road. They couldn't operate, they couldn't sell their coal. It's interesting because you've raised some of the unique features, including the fact that this is a worldwide issue. It was instantaneous. I have to believe just those two features further complicate the contingent business interruption claims. It certainly does. Uh, there's no question about that. And then you have uh, another factor too would be the the effect on the industry. You mentioned that it's a global situation, of course, and it is. And it's affecting different countries in vastly different manners. 
So we have to see how that plays out. One country might be um, uh, affected greatly and another one not so much. And then you have the different laws and the cultures of these countries that are going to all come into play to make a difference uh, for the ultimate outcome. You know, I think one of the most visible early on effects was in the cruise industry. We, we, we watched, you know, cruise lines being stranded, people being stranded, people unfortunately dying on cruises. I'm assuming that you're, you're seeing that's going to be an industry that's going to be profoundly affected as well. I would imagine as well. Yes. Everything from the shutdown, business interruption for a cruise industry. Uh, what about spoilation of the food that they had on board? You know, a cruise ship getting ready to take off for a couple of weeks has an enormous value of uh, food and drink on board. And if that's spoiled, there's a loss right there. What about the people who were on a cruise ship when it was ordered to stop and they were stranded on that ship? We've all read about several of those over the past uh, few months. Uh, do they have a claim against that cruise line for negligence, for not... Uh, for not shutting that down earlier when they could have gotten off. Uh, is there personal injury there as a result? We don't know. And, and within that same industry, uh, we've already seen some claims being brought against uh, basically securities law type claims being brought against the directors and the officers and the uh, companies themselves for misrepresentation to stockholders. Where do you see that going? That is probably one of the biggest questions there is. Um, you can imagine the decrease in value of a cruise line as a result of having to shut down operations. So um, is there a claim against the directors and officers for not having shut that down um, a week or two weeks earlier when, when they didn't have all of the claims from people uh, contracting the virus? Uh, when they wouldn't have had to have people on board for weeks that are that are now filing actions against them for personal injury of having to stay on board for a long time. So uh, this is uh, this is one big unknown.